The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'd like to share with you one of my favorite stories because this story has a very deep, deep moral and a very deep meaning. There used to be a long time ago on a farm, a farmer whose name was Yankel. And in front of his house was a 25-ton boulder. Huge, huge, huge boulder that you, you, there's no tractor even, I think, that they make that um, could push this boulder. Crazy, crazy, heavy, heavy boulder. It was like part of his, you know, outside of his house. One day he walks out <coughs> on his way to the, to the farm and he hears a voice from Shemayim. Yanko, Yanko. He goes, what, what's that? Who's that? Yanko. Hashem, is that you? Yes, it is God. Wow, and you're talking to me? Yes. What can I do for you? Yanko, for the next half hour, I want you to push that boulder in front of your house as hard as you can. Yes, God, yes, God, of course. I'll do that. And he walks up to the boulder. Pretty strong guy, Yanko. And he starts to push and push. And he's schwitzing, he's sweating. And the veins are popping out of his forehead. And he's pushing, and he's pushing. And after half an hour, he says, Was that good, Hashem? Perfect. Okay, go to work. Goes back, goes to work. Next day, comes out of the house, on his way to the farm. Yanko! Who that? Is that you, Hashem? Yep. What can I do for you? Yanko. You know that boulder in front of the house? For the next half hour, push it like you never pushed anything in your life. Half an hour, he's pushing, he's sweating, his back's hurting, his veins are popping. Your uncle's pushing. Of course, it doesn't move, it's 25 tons. This goes on, everybody who's listening. This goes on for a year, every day. Your uncle, is it you good? Yes, push the boulder. It goes on for a year. One day, he comes outside, and there's an angel dark, mean-looking, brooding, nasty angel standing by the boulder. And the angel turns to Yankel and says, Yankel, you know who I am? He says, you look pretty mean. I'm thinking you're the Satan, the devil. Yup, I am the devil. Yankel says, what could I do for you? So let me tell you something. People think I'm really a bad guy. The devil, the Satan, the Makatri. I am a bad guy. But I have a little teeny bit of a heart. Do, did you ever wonder why God is telling you every day to push the boulder? He goes, no. Did you move the boulder this year? He goes, no. He says, I'm going to tell you something you don't know. We came to God, all the angels, we came to God, and we told them that we work 24-7. And we need a break every day. We need a break. It's too much. So Hashem said, Okay, I'll give you a half an hour every day. Comedy relief. He said, Yanko, you, my friend, the half an hour that you're pushing that boulder, you are our comedy relief. I want you to know, when we watch you, you fool, pushing a boulder that doesn't move, we sit up in Shemayim and laugh our wings off. You're ridiculous! Yanko was a very plain guy. He's like, Are you telling me that Hashem 
God is using me for comedy relief? And all the angels in Shemayim are, are laughing at me? And the Satan says, Yup. And Yaakov is very upset and he's very hurt. Very hurt. Next day he comes out of the house and he hears a voice. Yaakov. Yeah, what? Yaakov. Yeah, what? You know who you're talking to? Yeah, I know I'm talking to Hashem. Making a fool out of me every day. Comedy relief. The Satan told me what's going on. You know that I can't move a 25 ton boulder. Why are you doing this to me? And God says to Yanko, hold on a second. Did I ever tell you to move the boulder? I never told you to move the boulder. I told you to push the boulder. Your job... Yaakov is to push the boulder. My job when I'm ready is to move the boulder. But I want to tell you something God says to Yaakov. Since I created the world, I have never had a better boulder pusher than you. You are my number one boulder pusher. Really? Never had someone that pushes as hard as you. Your job is to push the boulder, not move the boulder. And you're doing a great job. Really? Thank you, God. And he goes out to work on the farm. And there standing by the corn is the angel. And the angel says, the devil, the Satan, Satan, says to Yanko, what are you so proud of? What are you smiling about? You're a fool. Yanko says, oh no. God just told me that I'm the best boulder pusher since he created the world. I'm number one. And the Satan looks at him with his fiery eyes and he says, Yanko, you fool. Don't you understand what God's saying? You're the best boulder pusher doing nothing because you're pushing and it ain't moving. So God's probably telling you you're the best do-it-nothing guy he ever created. I wouldn't be happy if I were you. He was a plain guy. Hashem is saying that he's the best boulder pusher. There's something saying he's the biggest fool. He's like, oh, I don't know, what am I? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get blitzed. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to town. I'm going to the bar. I can't deal with this. Best pusher, no push. I can't deal with this. I'm done with this. I'm not pushing no more boulders. And he makes his way into town to get blitz, to get drunk, so he doesn't have to deal with all this emotional chaos. And he comes around the corner on his way to town, and there's a wagon. And there's a lady screaming, Help, help! My husband! He was changing the tire of the wagon and it fell on him. He's suffocating. He's dying. Could you run to town and, and get a bunch of people to lift the wagon and save my husband? And Yaakov sees a f- some feet sticking out from the bottom of the wagon. He goes, your husband's not going to make it till I get to town, till I bring people back. He'll be dead. Let me lift the wagon. And you pull your husband out. And the lady says, sir... We have 500 pounds of cement in the back of that wagon. Nobody can lift that wagon. You got to go get help. And Yanko's like, lady, by the time I get back, he'll be dead. Listen to me. I'm going to lift the back of the wagon, and when I do that, you pull him out. She says, unless you're Superman, you're not going to be able to lift the back of that wagon. Whoever's listening, listen very carefully why I love this story. He bends down, he bends down, and he puts his arm underneath the wagon, and he starts to pull up the wagon with the muscles in his arms and his shoulders and his legs that he built by pushing a boulder that didn't move for a year. All that 
that muscle from pushing something that couldn't move comes into play. And he lifts the back of the wagon two feet off the ground. She pulls her husband out. He's gasping for breath. But Yankel saves his life. And she turns to Yankel and she says, I don't know who you are, but you're my Superman. Wow. Thank you so much. And Yankel says, don't thank me. A year ago, I could not have done this. Your, your husband would have died. Thank a 25-ton boulder that sits in front of my house that won't move. What's the moral and why is this story the one that I chose? In life, many times we struggle and we push and we push and we push and our troubles don't go away and our struggles don't go away and the Satan says, what are you doing? You're just making a fool out of yourself. You're a joke. We're laughing at you. What are you wasting your time? You can't do anything. And Hashem says, keep davening, keep learning, keep believing in me, keep pushing. And you're like, why should I keep pushing? Nothing changed. Because what God is doing, He's building up something in you, emotionally and spiritually, and sometimes physically, called struggle muscle. What struggle muscle does for a person it gives that person the power to carry others that are also struggling. But if you did not struggle, you would not be able to help them. So the lesson of this story is that sometimes the rock don't move. It's not supposed to. Hashem is saying, your job is to dive in, to learn, to do mitzvahs, Push, never to give up, not to be miyayish. My job, says Hashem, is when the time comes, I will move the boulder in your life out of the way. That's my job, says Hashem. That's not your job. It's based on, this whole story is based on a Mishnah in Pirkei Avos that says, Lo hamlacha ligmar. It's not for you to finish the job. It's for you to start the job. God says, it's for me to finish the job. You push. And if it doesn't move, don't worry. When it's time to move, Hashem says, I'll move it. And that gives us the power to go on. And that gives us the muscle that we need in order to carry others. I went through my stuff. The best people to help others are the people that went through what the others went through. Struggle muscle. So to whoever's listening to this story... Don't give up. Don't listen to the satan. Don't get depressed. Don't get anxious. Don't give up. Keep pushing. You keep pushing. And even if the thing that you're pushing to try to get out of the way is not getting out of the way, at the same time, you're building struggle muscle. And that will give you the ability to carry others that are going through the same thing that you are. That's why I love this story, because this story has an amazing moral. Let me tell you the background of this story. Many years ago, we usually make an Ornava dinner during Sphira because people can't go to weddings and people can't go to bar mitzvahs. So that's when we make it and we get seven, eight hundred people. But about seven years ago, we couldn't do it for whatever reason during Sphira. We decided to do it in June. And a lot of people said, don't do it in June, because June's all the weddings and the bar mitzvahs and, 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 and graduations, and, and, and you know, it's right after Sphira, and you're not, no one's going to come, but I had no choice. So I got this really rich, rich um, guest of honor and ordered 800 seats in a beautiful the Prospect Hall, had a caterer for 800 meals, um, got some music. It was June 15th, I think. And we're going to have this amazing dinner. Two weeks before the dinner, 
my secretaries come into my office and they're like, Rabbi Wallerstein, we have a major problem. So what's the problem? We only have 72 reservations. The dinner is in two weeks. You ordered 800 meals. We have to cancel. I'm like, but if I cancel, I'm going to insult the guest of honor. He's not going to give me any money. And I'm going to, he's going to be embarrassed. And Ornava can't, we printed already everything. I, I can't cancel an Ornava dinner. No one's ever going to believe there's another dinner after this. I can't cancel it. They're like, if you cancel it now, the caterer said he's only going to charge you this and this, and the whole only charge cancellation fee. But if you don't cancel it, you have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars, and no one's coming. I didn't know what to do, so I went to Shemesh Shabbos down the block to Dabi Mincha, hoping that Hashem would give me the right kavana, the right thoughts of what I should do. You know, all the men that are listening, when you go to Dabi Shmona Esrei. I pretty much have to say Tzilas Aderach because I'm all over the place. When you dance with your head's all over the place. Someone told me Tzilas Aderach. He said I am so far all over the place during Shmon Esrei that when I finish Shmon Esrei, I got to bench Gaimo. I'm like on the other side of the world. It's true. Like you, you know, you just you're all over the place. Business ideas come in, other ideas come in. So I said, you know what? When I dance with Shmon Esrei, Hashem will say, make the dinner, or don't make the dinner. It was the best Shmon Esrei ever done, and I didn't have any outside kavanas. I didn't get any ideas, I didn't get any thoughts. It was like, that didn't work. So I walked out of Mincha, and I was, I'm canceling. I can't take a chance, $100,000 to lose. And I, the guests of honor, what should I do? And it's a big shame for Ornava. And I walk out, and there's this Rabbi Simcha Salavechik, big gadol. And he sees me, and he comes over to me, and he says, you, I, you never look, you look very depressed. You're not... You're always happy, Rabbi. Rabbi Wallerstein, tell me what's going on. I told him I have a dinner. 800 people. I only have 72 reservations. I'm going to lose my pants over here. So I, I have to cancel, and it's a boucher, and it's embarrassment. He says, let me tell you a story. And he tells me this story. I'm not your uncle. He tells me this story. And he said, your job, Wallerstein... It's to make the dinner. It's God's job to make it successful, not you. Make the dinner. Okay? So I didn't get it during Shemun Esri, but Yitzhak Salavich is a very holy man. I come back and I tell the secretaries, we're making the dinner. What? We're making the dinner. I don't care. Hundred, it's going to be 100 people in the end, not 72. We're making the dinner. Ladies and gentlemen who are listening to my story, do you know how many people came to that dinner? Over 800 in two weeks. 72 to 800. What happened? Everyone heard that I was canceling the dinner and it would be a total failure. All my friends who had weddings and graduations and everything came to the dinner in the middle of the wedding, before the wedding, after the wedding, before the graduation, after the graduation, because they didn't want me to be embarrassed. So everyone who ever came to one of my dinners came to that dinner because they heard it's going to be a failure. So I'm going to go, at least I'm going to help Zechariah show up. They show up and the place is packed. Packed. And they're like, you lied. You sent the message to everyone that you're going to be empty. You were never empty. That whole story wasn't true. But it was true. So this story about pushing the boulder is what made me make that dinner. And Baruch Hashem, we raised a lot of money. So never give up. Just keep pushing. And Hashem's job will be to move that boulder. And that is why I feel that we're in Gullus, especially after a year of COVID. We had a big boulder and we tried a lot of stuff and a lot of people died and a lot of people are not here this Pesach. And we pushed. And we pushed. And it didn't seem to move. Baruch Hashem, it did move. And we're all together. Mitz Hashem, families are together. But through the whole, through the whole gullus, we're pushing and we're pushing and we're pushing. And what we're growing is struggle muscle. And that's why Klai Yisrael is able to help each other. And to carry each other through this gullus. And my prayer after this whole story, my tefillah is... 
that it's time for you, Hashem, to move the boulder. To take that huge boulder, that huge rock, and place it as the cornerstone of the next base Hamigdash, of the third base Hamigdash. The cornerstone of the third base Hamigdash is the boulder that Klai Yisrael pushed and pushed and pushed, and it didn't move. And Hashem finally decided, and I hope before this Pesach, we can bring the current Pesach, that Hashem pushed the boulder into place, is the cornerstone of the Beis HaMikdash. We should all see Mashiach. Thank you for listening. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by Torah Anytime. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.